Uno, dos, one, two, tres, cuatro. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Rethink Your Legacy. I am Francisco Cervant, your host, your attorney and problem solver at law. Good morning, everybody. This is the start of the end of the year. Everybody, get your holiday hats on. I guess it's time to start planning all the Christmas parties and holiday parties and family get-togethers. Hopefully, you're looking forward to those. (laughs) I know sometimes they can be a little stressful. But good morning, everybody. Uh, If we haven't met before, if you are just joining the show for the first time, put this number in your phone or jot it down on a piece of paper because this is how you get in touch with my law firm if you need to. Um... I hope you only do that on the good side of this equation. Uh, A lot of stuff we talk about is on getting your affairs in order, you know, while we're still here and have time to do something about it. So write this phone number down, 480-750-7788. And we do give everybody a free first phone appointment just to figure out what's going on, what you need, if we're a good fit, if you think we're a good fit. And... That's the good side of the equation. The flip side of the equation, of course, is unfortunately when people call our office and there's been, you know, the planning wasn't done right or it was old or whatever, and there's a there's some kind of problem to solve, and that's what we do at my firm. We're a boutique Chandler firm, and um, I really, I, 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 <laughs> what am I trying to say? I stepped out into my own with my own firm in 2007. Because I literally could not stand how most attorneys were doing business. It was driving me nuts. There are some really good attorneys out there, thank goodness. And they're the ones that I've tried to learn from and model how we do things. But there are just way too many that are, they're more, uh, well, I'm not going to try to say what they are. I just don't agree with how they do things. I, I, so when you call our firm, I hope you expect to have a better experience. We don't treat it like a law firm in a lot of ways. Sometimes we are, we're just having fun with our clients. So give us a call if you do need help with anything on the estate planning or probate stuff. <clears throat> Today, you know, this was um, last weekend was the sort of hustle, hurry uh, to, to get everybody evacuated out of Afghanistan, and the deadline came, and the deadline passed, and I'm sitting here wondering and really praying for those who maybe didn't get there in time, those who still want to evacuate. Um, I really just, you know, it's such a chaotic part of the world. You know, there's lots of parts of the world, right, that are in chaos. I was just talking with somebody who lives in South Africa, and they're going through some insane riots and, I mean, bad stuff. But, you know, it just, it just, our heart has to go out when things like this happen, right? Because we live in a country where relatively we we know we're safe from that kind of uh, turmoil, that kind of danger, So I, you know, at the same time that I, my heart goes out, I pray for those people and for peace in those areas. I'm, I'm immediately just grateful for what we have here. Uh, And, you know, and as I get phone calls every week, every, you know, every day, every day, every week, every week from people who are embroiled in a mess, you know, um, mom didn't update her will or dad didn't say that anything needed to be done when he passed away or we're fighting over, you know, should dad live in Arizona or Wisconsin, you know, and and back and forth because everybody has a different perspective and it wasn't clear what his wishes were. I mean, right. And I just, it is emotional to be in those fights, but I'm still grateful that it's not the type of emotional stress that some people in the world are facing. So today I wanted to go into one of the fundamentals that a lot of you have asked for more and more and more information on. And so this show today is for, it's specifically for two types of people here in Arizona. If married, single, that's not the, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about, two specific types or or people who are in these two camps, okay? 
The first one is, and you know who you are. You've been thinking about getting your trust done or a will, and you're kind of not sure what the difference is, but or, or which one is right for you. You're thinking about it, and one of those things in your mind that's maybe holding you back is that thought of, this just all feels really complicated, I don't have time to figure it out, and I, yeah, you know, you just feel a little bit confused about it. I want to bring you clarity about one specific part of creating your trust. So for that's for you, and you're going to understand better after today exactly what this big chunk of the trust is, what it does, how it benefits you while you're alive, how it benefits your family, your loved ones after you're gone. So that's for you sitting there listening, thinking, I know I need to do this. Should I do it? You know, that's you. You've never done it and you know you need to. The other person who's sitting here listening is the one who has done this in the past. You created a trust before and something is tickling the back of your mind, right? That little birdie on your shoulder is whispering in your ear saying, you need to update this. I think it's getting old. I, I'm not sure <laughs> this thing is going to work when we're gone or when I'm gone. Is it really going to do what I picture, you know? And you're, and that has been nagging at you and nagging at you and nagging at you. And you've been ignoring it. You've been pushing that thought aside. You've been, you know, busy with other stuff legitimately. This is for you because one of those pieces that I bet is nagging you is this whole topic that I'm going to talk about because you're probably sitting there wondering, wait, I'm not sure this was ever even really done correctly. Yeah, there's a lot of this in my industry. There are a lot of of professionals here in Arizona, I guess probably nationwide, that will sell you a trust. And in, and just to kind of let everybody know, I am a firm believer that a trust does a better job than a will simply because it opts, it gives you the chance to opt, opt out of the whole probate system, the whole guardianship, conservatorship nightmare that I talk about all the time. And it's no more expensive. It's no more complicated. It's a little tiny bit more work, but I mean, for the little tiny bit more work, it's worth it. Um, it basically does what a will, what we all think a will should do, right? Hey, I put my wishes down. It's in legal writing. Like it'll be easy for my family. Not in Arizona. Will that doesn't happen, but with a trust it can. So today we're going to talk about the thing that almost none of my colleagues talk about. It's like the, 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 I don't want to say, oh my gosh, can I, am I allowed to say redheaded stepchild? No, I'm probably not anymore. That's, I'm sorry for those of you who've, uh, who've had to live with that as a negative label. Um, so no, I'm not going to call it that. It's been the ignored piece of estate planning because us lawyers don't want, don't want it to sound hard for our clients to get this done. And so you know what ends up happening? Nightmares. And it's the trust funding. It's uh, it's not that hard. It just has to get done. So we're going to go into trust funding in detail today. I'm gonna. I've got a couple nightmare stories. Actually, one nightmare story, one huge success story that I want you guys to know how trust funding affects you and affects your loved ones. And I'm going to give you this gigantic tool that. Previously, I've offered this on the show a couple times before, and you guys seem to love it. So I'm going to offer it again. This is something we almost, we've never given except on this show, and we only give to our clients. So after you hire and pay us, it is our firm's trust funding instructions, which details a ton of this. You can go grab that right now on our website and have it while we're talking about it today. Go over to radio.keystonelawfirm.com, radio.keystonelawfirm.com, and enter your name and email. It'll send it to you. It takes a couple minutes for the system to process, and you'll have it right in your email. It's just a 
big long PDF of all these amazing, beautiful instructions about how to fund your trust. All the different types of bank accounts, investment accounts, real estate, retirement, life, I mean, life insurance, annuities, gold, it covers everything. That's my gift to you today. Go get that. If you know you need to set up a trust, go get this so you have some idea of what is going to be expected. If you've already done it, and this is one of those things you're just not sure if it's done right, then go get it, please. Radio.keystonelawfirm.com and you just enter your name and email, the system will blast it out to you. All right? So after the break, I I want you to know how this one family ended up basically paying about $100,000 because they didn't get their trust funding done right. They lost literally over six figures. So we're going to talk about that after the break so you can avoid it. Be back in a minute. Ah, welcome back, everybody, to Rethink Your Legacy. This is Francisco Servent with Keystone Law Firm. We are a boutique firm out of Chandler, Arizona, that focuses on estate planning, asset protection, and anything that happens in the probate system. That's generally where you end up if you didn't do the planning right. And um, as much as I would love to wave a magic wand and make the probate court disappear. You guys, too many people, there are over 14,000, almost 15,000 probates filed every year. Just in Arizona. Come on, we need to do better. Our families expect better of us. 15,000 just probate cases? Do you know how much money lawyers are making off of this? Lawyers are literally funding their own child's college education, their own retirement accounts, their own child's new house, new car. You guys, this is your money. You worked hard for it. Your kids, your family, your loved ones, the charities you want to benefit should benefit from it. Not all these lawyers in the probate system. So let's do better. So one of the things today, or the thing today that we're talking about is funding your trust and how to make sure your estate stays out of probate. Now, who has an estate? Everybody does. It's it's a term that, you know, traditionally, historically is used just for the wealthy, like, oh, look at that estate over there, you know, referring to like a big mansion or castle or something. In Arizona, that the estate just means, you know, your car, your house, the, the your clothes, your checking account. It just means your stuff. So your stuff is under probate law, your estate. And all of that stuff is either going to go through probate because you didn't have it designated correctly, or it's going to go through your trust to who you intend. The The first lesson that I had in this was a hard lesson to learn because it was with an actual client years and years and years ago where they had done an estate plan. They're, you know, a couple, been married forever, and they had a friend who was a lawyer back east, um, and there was a, some medical issues, and they said, you know, you really got to get your affairs in order. Okay, great. They got them in order. Friend helped them put it all together. And, you know, they did the will, the trust, the power of attorney, the medical directives, living will, whole package of, of legal documents. The friend was a really, really good attorney, but his folk, his practice area, what his expertise was really in was not wills and trusts. It was, I think he was uh, like a business attorney. And so he kind of just found the templates and cobbled them together and got them signed and, you know, sent them on their merry way. 10 years goes by and she needs to use the documents because her husband's health is declining And when she goes to use them at their financial advisor, she hands the power of attorney, she hands over the trust and says, you know, here's where I'm designated to take care of everything. I need to um, start making plans for withdrawals from the retirement accounts. Well, 
the financial advisor ha has to have them reviewed by the compliance department at his company. And they come back and they say, these things are too old. Literally, they, they came back with their first, their first reason for rejecting them was they're too old. Power of attorney is too old. And from another state, like you're here in Arizona, um, we're not going to recognize that. And the trust itself never was fully implemented. So, sorry, the account, you can't access it. It's frozen. And, you know, she had uh, the same reaction that I'm sure a lot of you are having. Well, wait, what do you mean? Isn't it a joint account? Well, retirement accounts are not joint They're while you're alive. They just are not. Under tax law, they can't. Well, what if isn't she... Um, a beneficiary of the account. Why can't she get to it? She's a beneficiary. Yes, that is correct, except her husband hasn't died yet, and a beneficiary doesn't transfer until the person dies. So her husband's still alive. She needs the account to pay bills for him now. So they freeze the account. And in their policy book, they have kind of a standard letter that says to get access to the account, you have to get a court order. And that happens in a court case in the probate court system. That's where she got referred to me. And that was one of my first experiences into this area. Um, I was a young attorney and, and that's where I learned how bad the probate system is while somebody's alive. It is a nightmare. If you're in that system, holy moly, I'm sorry. My heart goes out to you. And if you need help, give us a call 480-750-7788. What I want you to really get, though, is before it's a problem, I want you to go get this, our instructions. Go right now and get this. We're giving it away. I'm giving it to you. This is something we only reserve for our clients, typically. I've done it two times on this radio show, and you guys seem to love it. So I'm offering it to you again, and this is our complete revocable trust funding instructions. It's a long PDF document. You're going to get our specific instructions that we normally only give to our clients go over to and you can get it from your right off your phone radio.keystonelawfirm.com and all you do is enter your name and email and it'll go right straight to you um just you go to that in your browser you know like in safari or chrome or google or something radio.keystonelawfirm.com the the problem that she ran into was when they created their trust 10 years earlier. You know what the attorney never told her, told him, told them? That they needed to re-register their accounts into the name of their trust or their real estate or their business. Nothing. Didn't say anything about it. And the attorney didn't know. So there you go. At least this attorney didn't do it on purpose. They just screwed up. This court case, the conservatorship that she had to go through to get access to that account, and then to stay in compliance with the court process for the next 12, 13, 14 years, cost this family over six figures in probate fees. It is ridiculously expensive. And not only that, but she had to get the court's approval every time she wanted to make any big change, any time she wanted to... Uh, every year she had to tell the court, here's how I spent every single penny. This is literally their money that she's using for her husband. She has to account to the court every year. Talk about a nightmare. She had to hire a bookkeeper just to help her get all this stuff in order. All because the lawyer that helped them didn't know any better. Well-meaning, but just didn't know any better. So, and, and I've hired staff members who've worked at other state planning firms and we train them and we train them and, and then they hear about trust funding. They're like, wait, what, what is this big deal you're making about? What is trust funding? And I'm blown away that this is the first time they're hearing about it. Staff members experienced from other estate planning firms here in town have never heard about it. So you guys know about it now. You know, there's no excuse. Your trust must be funded. You've got to get your bank, your regular checking, your good old day-to-day -day checking account. My wife and I, ours is in the trust. Your savings, your money market, your investment accounts, your brokerage. Uh, you got to coordinate your retirement accounts, your real estate, your life insurance, annuities, everything. How do you do it? Okay, there are two big things that we're going to talk about after the break. 
The first one is ownership changes, and the second is beneficiary changes. These two pieces are different. Don't mix them up. If you get it wrong, there could be big dire consequences on the tax side. It could end up being screwed up and end up in probate anyway. So you're going to have to understand the the foundation of trust funding. And that's the difference between ownership changes and where you're going to do that versus beneficiary changes and where you're going to make those changes, okay? So go over, open your phone, open your iPad, go to your internet and type radio.keystonelawfirm.com. You'll see our page. It's got a little form. Fill it out. Get these trust funding instructions. I promise you, you want these. If you ha- if you did a trust in the past and you didn't get something like this, you definitely want these, okay? If you know you need to get something done, uh, I know, Francisco, we, we need to do our will. Maybe you've got little kids. Maybe you're just retired. You're like, yes, I know. Maybe you've been elbowing your husband for the last two years. We need to get this done. We need to get this done. At least go get this so you can see what it is to fund your trust when you're going to get there, right? When you finally do pull the trigger and get it done, then you'll have some really good tools to help you do this piece of it. Radio.keystonelawfirm.com and enter your name, email, system. We'll ship it off right to you. If you just need help, okay, or after you get this, You review it and you go, holy cow, I don't want to figure all this out on my own. Fine. That's what we do one-on-one with our clients. Call 480-750-7788. You can call, leave a message. You can send a text message right now. And my staff will call you back Monday morning and say, hi, how can we help? What's going on? And the first step will be is usually to schedule a free phone appointment to help you figure out the next steps. All right. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Rethink Your Legacy, guys. Welcome, good morning. My name is Francisco Servent. I am your attorney and problem solver at law, so don't hesitate to give us a ring. The office phone number is 480-750-7788. If you need help with anything on the estate planning, asset protection, probate, guardianship, conservatorship stuff. That's what we do every day, all day. Uh, My team's not there. It's Sunday morning, right? You're just barely waking up and they are sleeping in probably. So they're not there. Leave a message. Send a text 480-750-7788 if you need help with anything. And my team will get back with you first thing Monday morning. Most likely if it's something we can help with, their first step will be to schedule you with a free phone call and um, they'll help you get that scheduled. So today is all trust funding, and what I want you to do is know this. If you need to do this, and here's who that is, right? Who needs to do a trust? Well, I'll give you, here's the ultimate uh, way to find that out. The ultimate way to find that out, you know, do I need a trust? Is my situation complicated enough? Is if it's been nagging at you for a while and you haven't done anything about it, you need something. Everybody needs at least a will. But uh, generally speaking, I'm a big fan of trust. They do what a will does. They just do it better. In Arizona, it's no more expensive. It's it's so much easier for your family and your loved ones. So if it's been nagging at you, then go get this tool that I'm giving you, the Revocable Living Trust Funding Instructions. It's tons of info. Normally, we only give this to our clients. I'm giving it to you. So you know what that next step is after you've created your trust, how to make sure your assets are inside your trust, okay? And you can do that at radio.keystonelawfirm.com. This is also for those of you who've been sitting on your trust for too long. Yeah, and maybe, you know, I'm going to, I'm married. My wife and I have been married. We just celebrated 20 years. I'm going to use some analogies that are are pretty relevant from my life. Maybe you guys can relate where, you know, for uh, what was, oh, I saw the funniest meme. It says you don't need to like nag your husband to take out the chores. He'll, he'll get around to it in the next three months or so, something like that. Um, 
uh, it, generally speaking, and I know it's over generalization, but some of you wives, you've been throwing the elbow into your husband husband's ribs, going, well, "We need to get this done. We need to get this done. Our trust is old. It's from California. It's from Washington. It's from New Jersey. You know, I don't know if it's different in Arizona." Yes, the answer is the guy on the radio saying, yes, it's different, and you do need to update it um, simply if that's the only reason, if you move states. But generally speaking, if it's over five years, you need to update it, and then you may have some things you want to change in it. So, yes, you need to update it. Legally speaking, you might be giving your family a nightmare. So don't do that. If that's you, then you should also go get these revocable trust funding instructions. Radio.keystonelawfirm.com. Calm, all right, go there and get it. So, what I want to cover first, uh, right now, is the two different things that have to happen inside of this topic trust funding. The first one is ownership changes, the second one is beneficiary changes. What's the difference? Ownership changes are Effective, effectively changing the ownership of it today. So you, like when you sell a house, you immediately give the deed to the new buyers, to the buyers, right? You don't, it's not yours anymore. Ownership changes are effective today. Beneficiary changes are effective at death and not before death. So, right? Like really draw that distinction in your mind. Like picture that for just a moment. I know we don't like talking about our death. Okay, I get it. And I know some of you are are still grieving the loss of a loved one right now. So this may be hard to even hear. But that there's a big distinction there. I hear I hear it over and over and over and over. Uh, uh, how, you know, well, uh, no, we're named be- beneficiary. So I should be able to get to my dad's account if he's incapacitated. No, no, not at all. Or... But I'm beneficiary on my wife's IRA, my husband's IRA. Why can't I get into it now? No. Beneficiaries only are effective at death. Period. There is no way around it. Okay? Ownership changes are effective today or the day you do the paperwork. They're effective today. So some types of accounts you're going to make an ownership change to. Or I should say, some types of things, some types of assets, properties, etc., 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 you're going to make ownership changes to, to get them into your trust. Other things, you're going to make beneficiary changes to, okay, to get it into your trust. And guess what? Yep, there are some things where you're going to do both. (laughs) Ha ha! Isn't estate planning so interesting? My gosh, Francisco, you make this topic, which would otherwise be just like so boring you make it so interesting ha 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 right yeah some things you'll do ownership some things you'll do beneficiary and some things you'll do both your job is to make sure you know which ones get what treatment obviously we tell our clients what to do when we're working with you one-on-one so you don't need to figure it out if you want you can just get our help with it so the other way to figure out is to go get this revocable trust instructions the trust funding instructions go right now It's worth jumping on your phone, taking just a second, and going to the website radio.keystonelawfirm.com and downloading it just right now. Go get it. I want you, I want to give this to everybody. Anyway, okay, so what goes into which bucket? All right, Um, I'm going to give you a a sort of some context that you could use to help figure out any figure out anything okay the general context is that if the thing that you're wondering about you know you, you've got your whole list of stuff that you need to fund into your trust and you're like oh what do I do do I ownership do I beneficiary does it need both one of the first piece of context is that if it is a um a qualified retirement account or was a qualified retirement account, maybe you turned it into a self-directed IRA, maybe you bought an annuity with it, then you are not going to make ownership changes to it. Okay, so qualified retirement assets do not get ownership changes. That is a big, big rule 
that I would give you. That's one of the things that if you screw that up, you know, most custodians are not going to let you screw it up, but man, if you, if they did, you would end up with a big giant tax bill. It would it would look like you cashed in your IRA. A lot of taxes, right? So you're not going to make ownership changes to those. On those, it's going to be beneficiary changes. <clears throat> Okay, this the other thing that you're going to need to know is that you do not, you do not, you are not required, Arizona law does not, uh, does not require you to show any of them your complete, whole, big, long trust. Nope, you don't need to. That is private. That is yours. It has your private, you know, wishes in there. It, they have no right to it at all. The only thing they're entitled to, and they are entitled to, is something called a certification of trust. Short, couple pages, and it has the specific information almost, I, I, this is just what I've seen every bank use. It's got the name, the the fact that it uses the trust is your social security number, there's no separate tax ID number how the title should be registered, all the information. That certificate of trust is like the ID card for your trust, okay? that That's all they need to see, and that's all you need to share around with your bank and your financial advisor, etc., okay? Now, and with the last thing before I run out of time is that your revocable living trust, it it does use your social security number as the tax ID number all the way through your life, your whole life. Only at death does it get a tax ID number. So not while you're alive, okay? All right, go get the revocable living trust instructions at radio.keystonelawfirm.com and put those in your file. Tuck it away, but do something with it. Please, please. We don't need more probate cases these probate lawyers do not need more business. We, yeah, please, please, please go get this done. Um, I want to share with you a success story um, that was a close call. A gal was taking care of her father, and I'm going to share that with you after the break. Uh, but in the meantime, save this phone number, 480-750-7788. You're welcome to send a text and even say, hey, you know, I'm not ready yet, but I, you know, at some point I'm going to need to create my will or my trust or update my will or my trust. You're welcome to just get it on the radar, 480-750-7788. And my staff will, my staff will follow up and, and follow up whenever you want them to, 480-750-7788. Or go get the handout, the download, so we can keep looking at it after the break. Good morning. Welcome back to Rethink Your Legacy, everybody. My name is Francisco Servent, and I want to give you the, the uh, my trust funding instructions, my tool that I give to my clients. We give them this tool. We say, here it is. Um, and some of our clients opt to do it themselves and use the tool. Some of our clients have us do it for them because it's just, it's overwhelming sometimes. So this tool, though, is what we give our clients, people who have paid for our services. But I want to give this to you guys because some of you have trusts and you haven't got this done. Maybe you didn't even know it was supposed to be done. That's what's, that's what's, ugh. that's the worst case scenario is you didn't even know your trust needed to be funded. Either way, forgive yourself, right, for not knowing. That just is what it is, right? You're good now. Now you know. Let's jump over to the website, radio.keystonelawfirm.com. Download it. It's a PDF. You save it to your iPad, save it in your email. Uh, go to radio.keystonelawfirm.com. It goes through all the major types of bank accounts, investments, real estate, everything. And and tells you what to do, whether it's an ownership change or a beneficiary change. It gives you the specific instructions of what to do. So what do you do? You do what this one client of mine did. It was, I mean, it was a very, very close call for her. 
the way it came up, or I should say for her and her dad, the way it came up was her, her, um, her dad's health started to decline and he had a full estate plan, you know, the will, the trust, the healthcare directives, the living will, everything. Right. And it got to the point where she was needed to take over and help. Um, what didn't happen, unfortunately, was that his health care directive, you know, the health care power of attorney, when he did it was before the law changed in Arizona that said that made the distinguish that, that distinguished between your health care and your mental health care. There's this little nuance in Arizona law. And the mental health stuff is, can you put somebody into a memory care facility, which is a lockdown unit so that these residents can't wander out and get in, you know, get hurt or in trouble. So that his document didn't have that piece. So she ended up having to go to court to get that added because he was already incapacitated. That was a mess. That piece of it was ugly, was not fun, but you know what it didn't turn into? It didn't turn into a money grab under of his assets. The court did not seize control of his assets. Why? Because they were all registered in the name of his trust, funded correctly. And so his daughter was able to uh, manage and control and help with all that stuff as his trustee. And she didn't have to do it under all the supervision of the court system, which is so much more expensive and painful. He, I mean, it was a close call, right? She had to go to court to get the medical stuff fixed, to get the power to do that. Court would have easily swept all of the money up under its control if he didn't have his trust funded. So that's the key, right? Get your trust funded. Your bank and your checking accounts, what you do is you go to the bank and you tell the banker, I need to put my bank accounts in my trust. And you stick to your guns. You, you, They will tell you, no, just put a beneficiary. We'll just do pay on death. No. It needs to be in your trust now. Period. Because if you are in a car accident and you end up in a coma and you don't die, you're incapacitated then the POD doesn't trigger. And and that's the problem, okay? That is the problem. The POD, the pay on death, only triggers at death. But if there's dementia or Alzheimer's, then then what? It, you're, the, the account's frozen and you have to go to court. So yes, you're going to make a change of the ownership, put in the name of your trust, period. You, you stick to your guns. <laughs> you say to the banker, the guy on the radio told me so. Um, but what will happen is your banker will say, well, we need to open a new account. Yeah, I know it sucks, but it is so much easier for you to do that. Start to make the transition of your bill pays and your deposits from the old account to the new account, right? You can work on that over time. And then when it's all done, close the old account. It is so much better and easier for you to do that, to protect your money like that, than it is to just not do something, okay? What about stocks and brokerage accounts, um, investment accounts? With regard to these, if they are not qualified retirement accounts, same thing. You want them owned by your trust now. If you have them all, if you have all of your stocks and investments brokered at like Fidelity or Schwab or something, then they can do it in one fell swoop, right? They just have you change the account registration. If you have original certificate stocks or you hold them at like computer share, it can be a little more complicated because of the their transfer rules. So, but again, you got to do it. It's so much easier for you to do it than it is to wait and not get it done. What about real estate? So my rule with real estate is your house gets treated like this, one of two ways, your primary. Either if you have a mortgage, then you put a beneficiary deed on it. If you don't have a mortgage and you don't anticipate you know, getting one back, like ever borrowing against it, then go ahead and do a special warranty deed now. You get it put into the trust now. If you have a mortgage, you get have a beneficiary deed where it gets put into your trust at death. What about all these life insurance policies? This is where you do both life insurance policies and annuities if they are not 
from IRA retirement funds, then you both put the ownership in the trust and the beneficiary in the trust. Okay, well, what about, Francisco, all the retirement stuff? All of those get a whole different treatment, okay? They get two things. One of them is you go to the financial institution where they're held and you say, give me your power of attorney form. They each have one, Fidelity, Schwab, Merrill Lynch. Everybody has a form internally. You get that, you fill it out, you complete it, turn it back in, and you do a beneficiary change to something different to a standalone retirement trust. We've talked about those in the past. Don't do it to your regular trust. You want to do that to a standalone retirement trust. Oh my gosh. Um, What about businesses? Yes, businesses, you want them in the trust. What about um, gifts? Or if you are owed money from somebody, you can assign all of those to your trust. And all of that, you get all that done. And guess what? Your trust will be funded. You will feel better. You will sleep better. You will sort of have this weight that you didn't even know was on you. Just you will shed that weight. And poof, life will be better. So I invite you, go get this instructions. Go get my 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 whole PDF report on this at radio.keystonelawfirm.com. It's there for you. Go get it. Download it. Radio.keystonelawfirm.com. And, and don't, you know, I said earlier, just save it, tuck it away. I want you to print this thing out and put it on the refrigerator until it's done. This thing needs to stare at you in the face. If you need help with anything estate planning related, anything asset protection related, anything in the probate system, or if you're helping take care of an elderly family member, if you're the power of attorney, if you're the trustee, <clears throat> or you're the executor, That's what we do. Let us guide you. Let us see if we can give you some resources. Call our office at 480-750-7788. Call right now. Leave a message. My team will call you back Monday. And if it's something we can help with, they'll offer you the first step, which is a free phone appointment to figure out what's going on. Okay? There's no catch or anything. 480-750-7788. You can send a text message right now. We'll try to make it easy for you, and my team will call you back or text you back and uh, first thing Monday morning and help figure out the next steps. Guys, that is all I have for today. I thank you for giving me some of your time and your attention. Sunday morning, it's the start of your day. Do something today. Do something that changes a little bit of that legacy that you know you want to leave behind for the better. Do something today. Send a text message to someone you love someone you haven't heard from, give them a phone call, say hi. Thanks for joining me, guys. Go out and create that new legacy.